You don't know what I've been through Let me share my story with you All the things that he brought me through My stormy days and my rainy days You don't know all the tears I've cried The things I've kept Bottled up inside Trying My best to be strong Waiting on God And holding on Continuously to invite 
uh, someone to this room. Go ahead and share the video tonight. Go ahead and you like it, you share it, and you tag some others on tonight because we don't know uh, who stands in need of, of what on tonight. But I want everybody to receive a word from, from God. Listen, if you don't mind tonight, I need you to put some flames up. Those flames tonight are going to let me know that you have simply brought your fire and that you have came to receive some fire on tonight. Go ahead, everybody. Just type in the word fire, 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 fire. Put it all in the comment section. All I want to see is fire tonight. And that's what I am wanting to deliver. That's what I am wanting to bring forth. And I know that's what you are wanting to receive on tonight. I want to begin by telling everybody who I see online tonight. Sister Linda Johnson, I see you. Sister Stephanie Ethelie, Sister Carter, I see you. Uh, Sister Lisa, I see you. Sister Trivia, I see you. Sister Beverly, I see you. Sister Tanisha Clardy, I see you. Um, who else is this? Amen. Sister Christine Nams, I see you. Amen. Sister Ernette, I see you on here tonight. Amen. Amen. Sister Helena, I see you tonight. Amen. 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 We're going to turn up in this room tonight if we don't do nothing else. Amen. We're going to have a good time. We're going to shout. And then I'm going to let y'all go. Listen. I got 12 slides tonight, 12 slides. Everybody put in the comments, he got 12 slides, 12 slides. This is going to be a continuation because I know I can't get all 24 in tonight. So I'm going to do 12, just 12, one deuce, one deuce. Everybody say, one deuce, amen. Listen, let us have a word of prayer tonight. God of grace, God of mercy. Lord, how we thank you for another day, God, for another opportunity, and God, we come tonight to, to indulge in your word. God, we came to be educated, God, but then we came to edify you. We came to, that you may receive the glory on tonight. God, our heart's desire is to learn more about you and who you are and what you have done from past history to present time. God, our holy desire, God, is that you would open our minds, open our hearts, so that and, our, and open our eyes so that we are able to receive by any way necessary a true, authentic word from you. Father, it is my desire that some sinner man, some sinner woman, some sinner boy, some sinner girl, tonight come saying what if what is it that I have to do just in order to be saved and God we know it's because of the preaching and the foolishness of the gospel that men and women and children are saved now God we want to be obedient tonight and we want the Holy Spirit to now saturate this atmosphere we want the Holy Spirit to come in, God, and rest in this place tonight. And God, whoever is online, my personal prayer for them tonight, God, is that they will receive a word from on high, that they can take it and share it with their friends, with their family, with their loved ones, with their coworkers, about your goodness and your grace and your mercy. It's in Jesus' name that we all pray and all of us said together, Amen. Amen. If you don't mind turning with me tonight to Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 6, verses 10 through 12. Deuteronomy 6, 10 through 12. And if you would, just type that in tonight. If you got your Bibles, make sure you have your Bibles handy. 
tonight, I need you to get this word. I need you to read this word. And if you don't, then it will be on the screen for all of us. But tonight's lesson is entitled, Do Not Forget the Lord. Go ahead and begin typing that in tonight. Do not forget the Lord. Amen. The warnings given to Israel are good instructions we should also follow. I'll say it again for everybody that's online tonight. Don't or do not forget the Lord. The warnings given to Israel or Israel are good instructions we should also follow. Here is our scripture reading for tonight. When the Lord, your God, brings you into the land he swore to your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to give you a land with large flourishing, cities you did not build houses filled with all kinds of good things you did not provide wells you did not dig and vineyards olive groves you did not plant then you eat and are satisfied. Be careful that you do not forget the Lord who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. Listen, I'm going to read verse 11 and 12 again because I ought to see a whole bunch of hearts going up in this on, online tonight. Houses filled with all kinds of good things you did not provide. Wells you did not dig. And vineyards and olive groves you did not plant. Then you eat <laughs> and are satisfied. Be careful that you do not forget. Everybody say, be careful that you do not forget the Lord. Type in tonight, don't forget the Lord who brought you out of Egypt out of the land of slavery. Come on, type in tonight, don't forget the Lord. Amen. I'm not going to stress, I can't stress that enough tonight, don't forget the Lord. Amen. Here is our introduction tonight. As the Israelites were about to enter the promised land, Moses gave them instructions the commandments of the Lord had just been re-emphasized by Moses as being instrumental in their receiving the inheritance this land which God had promised to Abraham and his descendants was described as a land flowing with milk and honey. This was a figurative language to describe a wonderful place much better than anywhere else. Hold on. I got something I need to say to you on tonight. 
Stay where you are. Stay put. I need you to hear this, this other introduction on tonight. Deuteronomy is structured. It's not on the screen. As three speeches which Moses delivers to the Israelites as they reach the end of their journey through the wilderness. And in this first speech, he emphasizes the importance of the first commandment. This passage follows immediately after the great ringing statement. Hold on, here's the ringing statement. Hear, O Israel, the Lord, our God, is one Lord, and you shall love the Lord, your God, with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. Hold on. This passage tonight simply concerns both the positive results of loving the Lord and the dangers inheriting in receiving our good. The promise is absolutely if we devote it's absolute if we devote all our energy to expressing the power of our indwelling Christ our lives will be blessed and abundant. Hold on. Watch this and hear this tonight. Sometimes it's easier to maintain that spiritual focus when we're in the midst of a wilderness. Type that in tonight. Sometimes it's easier to maintain that spiritual focus when we're in the midst of a wilderness. Sometimes it's easier to maintain our spiritual focus when we're in trouble, when we're in the midst of a pandemic, when we've been going through. Sometimes it's good for us to be in a wilderness situation because it allows us to focus on God. Come on, here. The source of those rewards and to start thinking that we're doing it out. Sometimes, watch this, hear this tonight. There's a temptation to forget the source of those rewards. And to start thinking that we're doing it ourselves. Tell somebody tonight that we are not doing this by ourselves. We can't do it alone. We must always remember that the joy and beauty and abundance we experience in life are not the result of our own abilities. They are expressions of divine energy. Type in divine energy tonight. The Lord is the source and I will focus on the Lord within us is the means that allows that energy to be expressed. Now let's flow tonight. Come on. Let's ride out. This is what I want you to see tonight. Type this in. The gifts or gifts and blessings to accompany the land. Gifts and blessings to accompany the land. First of all, cities in which cities which they had not built, houses full of things they had not put there, wells they had not dug, vineyards and olive trees they had not planted. God was going to make their life easier. 
so they did not have all the hard work of settlement. I'm going to say this last part again. God was not was going to make their life easier so they did not have all the hard work of settlement. Can I tell y'all something? God is literally trying to make our lives easier. Look, tonight he made their lives easier because these, this was a city that they did not even build. Houses full of things that they had not even put there. Wells they had not even dug. Vineyards and olive trees they had not even planted. God made it easier for them. Tell somebody tonight in the room, God will make it easier for you. Look, I need you to see this. I take this picture off of the internet and I take this picture because this house is already furnished. And tonight, there's not many of us that can say that we have literally walked in a home or an apartment that was already furnished. Come here. This house is already furnished. And that's how it was for them, Israel, on tonight. They walked into a place that was already furnished. And I want to tell you tonight is that you can too, you too can simply walk in a place that is already furnished. It ain't got to be no car. It ain't got to be no house. It ain't got to be any of those type of luxuries. But guess what? You too can have some things that's already furnished. Matter of fact, some of us have already got some stuff that was already furnished. Some stuff that you were not even deserving of, God has already furnished it for you. And then, hold on, hold on, here's the other part. Some of us don't even appreciate what God has done. Tell somebody tonight, I'm appreciative of what everything that God has literally furnished me. What, what are you saying, Pastor Carter? I'm appreciative of everything that he has given me up until this stage of my life. It was a whole lot of stuff I was not even uh, I was not even worthy of receiving, but God has simply made a way out of no way. Yep. Yep. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on tonight. The people were also instructed that the security and safety of the land was dependent upon their obedience to God. Hold on. The people were also instructed that the security and safety of the land was dependent upon their obedience to God. It is in Deuteronomy 28 and Leviticus 26 where God had promised blessings for obedience and calamity for disobedience. Somebody is asking me tonight, what is calamity? Calamity is a great misfortune or disaster, a flood or a serious injury, affliction, adversity, misery, Hold on. God had promised blessings for obedience. Tell somebody tonight, and you can post in the chat, you can post in the comment section, there are some blessings in our obedience. There are some blessings in your obedience. There are some blessings in my obedience. There's some blessings when I do the right thing. There's some blessings when I talk the right way. There are some blessings when I share the gospel. But he says, guess what? There's some calamity. There's some there are some injuries. There are some 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 afflictions. There's some adversity. If you are disobedient, 
Tell somebody tonight, we all need to be obedient. Come on. Their destiny and outcome was under their control. Tell somebody in the room and type this. Your destiny is in your control. It's right in the grips of your hand. Your outcome is right in your, in your control. It's not in Beverly's control, Lori Ann, for you. Lisa, it's not in your sisters. It's not in your mothers, your fathers, but it's in your, it's in your control, your, your destiny. Where you are headed is in nobody else's control, but it is in your control. What you're going to gain next, what you're going to, what you're going to experience next is in nobody else's control. It's all in yours. Tell somebody I got the power tonight. Tell somebody I got the power. Yeah. And they also got a warning. They received a warning. Don't forget, do not forget the Lord. Do not forget the Lord. Everybody begin typing this in. We should learn from the Israelites. We should learn from the Israelites. Type that in tonight. We should learn. For over 400 years, they had been wanderers without land. For over 400 years, they had been wanderers without land. For over 200 years, they were slaves in Egypt. For over 200 years, they were slaves in Egypt. Can you imagine going through for 400 years? Can you imagine for going, for, for, for going through for 200 years? Y'all, some of us can't even go, go, some of us can't even go through for uh, 20 minutes, uh, 20 seconds, uh, less long. Uh, one out. Some of us can't go on, can't, can't, can't experience nothing bad in our lives. Can't go through for a year. But these people went through for over 400 and 200 years. Come on. They just went through a number of battles with the inhabitants of the land. They fighting over the land. They were successful with God's help. Tell somebody you can be successful tonight with God's help. I'm looking at you tonight. I'm looking at everybody that's online tonight. Uh, Heather, you can be successful with God's help. Satrivia, you can be successful with God's help. Cecilia, you can be successful with God's help. Demetrius Jefferson, you can be successful with God's help. Julia, you can be successful with God's help. Helena, Lorianne, Christine Neal, y'all can all be successful with God's help. Tell somebody, I don't need no other man's help. I don't need no other woman's help. I need God's help. And God, if I just allow God to be God, God will do the rest. Tell somebody, God is the real mover. God is the real shaker. And that felt pretty good. Come here. They began thinking that they were the source of their strength. How do we think like this? We think that we are the source of our own strength. We think that we have the power. We think that we have all the know-how. We think that we, we have all the smarts. They had nothing to do but obey God. They had nothing to do but obey God. Let's switch it tonight. Let's switch it. Let's switch the sentence tonight. Let's say we have nothing to do 
but obey God. We have nothing to do but obey God. We have nothing to do but adhere to the word of God. We have nothing to do but adhere to the word of, of God. Somebody is saying right now, obedience is a sacrifice. Come on. I stole this today off the internet. Maybe my mind and body will become weak, but God is my source of strength. He is mine forever. Can we can we just can we just look off into the sunset? Can we just look at where we are right now? Can you just sit and just close your eyes for a moment? And just think about where you have been and where you are right now. Think about, close your eyes tonight and think about where you have been, what you've been through, and where you are right now. Come on, everybody, close your eyes. And I need you to think about where you've been, where you started at, and to where you are right now. And somebody out there tonight, you are better off right now than where you was five, ten, and fifteen. Years ago, you ought to be shaking your hands in the air. You ought to be waving your hand. You ought to be telling God, thank you. You ought to be giving God praise because literally you are not where you used to be. Even from a spiritual standpoint, you are not where you used to be. You've gained more wisdom. You've gained more knowledge. You've gained more understanding. Somebody ought to tell God, thank you because it ain't my strength. But it is because of God's might. It is because of God's power. It's because of God's endurance tonight. Maybe my mind and body will become weak. But God is my source of strength. He is mine forever. preaching to me. Their quick success led to complacency. Everybody say complacency. They became indifferent to any possible dangers. And the dangers were right under their noses. Sometimes danger is right, right under our nose. Sometimes danger is right beneath our lips. Sometimes danger is right beyond our, beneath our tongues. Danger is right beneath our eyes. They allowed some of the land's inhabitants to remain. This is going to get good right here. I shouted all day today. They allowed some of the land's inhabitants to remain. Tell somebody right now, I need to remove some stuff. I need to remove some stuff that's even in my house. I need to remove some stuff that's in my car. I need to remove some stuff that's in my cabinet. I need to, to remove some stuff that's in my, my, potted, my potted flowers. I need to remove some stuff that's on my work desk. I need to remove some stuff. Hold on. It's going to get good. They assimilated into the, the Canaanites' ways. What do you mean, Reverend Carter? To take in, to incorporate as one's own to absorb. They absorbed the Canaanites' ways. They started acting like them. They started doing things like the Canaanites. And sometimes that's how we, we do. When we see our next door neighbor doing certain things, when we see our homegirls and homeboys doing certain things, we begin to absorb that stuff uh what they're consuming what they're what they're taking in we begin to 
consume and all and, and take in all of those things that they are taking in. We start to take on their personality. Yeah. It was not long before they actually forgot God. It was not long before they actually forgot God. Listen, pause for a moment. Look at me dead in my eye because I'm looking at you. When you are consumed by other people and other things, when we allow our friends and some of our foes to enter into our lives, this holy and blessed temple that the Lord has given us, we begin to forget about God. Tell somebody right now, y'all, we cannot forget about God. No matter where we are, no matter what, what wilderness we're in, no matter what valley we are experiencing, no matter who's around us, no matter what we got going on, we cannot forget about God. Even right now in this pandemic, you can't forget about it. You can't forget about it. So, check it. They were too wrapped up in their safety and security that they let their guard down. I'm going to say it again for the people in the upper room. I'm going to say it again for the people that's outdoors, outside, in the back. I'm going to say it again for the people that's not sitting down with you. I'm going to say it again for even for your sister and your brother so you can go and repeat it to them. Listen, they were too wrapped up in their safety and security that they let their guard down. Help us tonight, Reverend Carr. What does this scripture say somebody? Romans 12 and 2, write it in the comments. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. I'm going to say it again. I'm going to say it loud. Listen, do not conform. Don't try to be nobody else. Don't act like nobody else to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Now, ask the, here's the big question tonight. Have you been transformed? Have your mind been renewed? That's the question that's on the table tonight. Come here. I'm almost home. We can be lulled into a false sense of security when we settle down and take our ease. We can be lulled. What do you mean by lulled? We can feel deceptively secure or confident into a false sense of security when we settle down and take our ease. Remove, remember this movie phrase, y'all. Y'all remember this phrase? Nothing can stop us now. Y'all been saying that? Can't nothing stop me now. Can't nothing stop me. These folks in Texas, they be like, can't nothing stop me now. Can't nothing stop me now. But they said, can't nothing stop me now. Hold on. The moment that is said, you know something is about to happen to them. Oh, yeah. Everybody that's to them said that. Can't nothing stop me now. Uh-huh. Can't nothing stop me now. Yeah. The moment that is said, you know something is about to happen to them. And well, this is the same problem they, that they experienced in the days of Moses and Joshua. It is called complacency. Everybody write that down tonight. Complacency. Write that down tonight. Complacency. 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 Here it is. 
This is my clothes for you tonight. This is my clothes. Everybody tell, tell everybody in the chat room tonight. Tell everybody online tonight. Uh, he closing, y'all. He closing. And he's closing with complacency. Come here. Complacency is man's biggest weakness. It creeps upon us when we least expect it. Complacency is man's biggest weakness. It creeps upon us when we least expect it. Complacency will kill you. Complacency kills. I'm going to let that soak in tonight. Complacency kills. And this is where we will pick up on next week. Go ahead and write this down. The New Testament church followed the same pattern. And I need to tell y'all on tonight is that complacency has nowhere in any of our lives. If you are a complacent Christian, you will find yourself at a standstill. Complacency does not give you the chance for elevation. And that's what the Holy Spirit just gave me to give you. Don't settle or have a complacent life, especially when it pertains to your Christianity. You ought to, you ought to want to know more and more about Christ than you ever, ever, ever wanted to know. At this very moment, at this very particular time, complacency kills. I urge you tonight to go ahead now and begin putting your prayer request into the comment section. And if there is somebody that is desiring that is desiring healing, that is desiring deliverance tonight. I ask that you would post those. If you have a testimony tonight, post your testimony. I don't care if it's just God has been good to me. Post your testimony. If you're having family difficulties, go ahead and post that tonight. And all these prayer warriors who are on the line, we're going to be praying. But tonight, I need you not to forget about the Lord. Because God is able to do anything and everything but fail. Let us now go to God in prayer. Gracious God, our Father, God, we thank you for tonight's lesson. God, we thank you for opening doors. We thank you for opening our eyes. We thank you for opening our heart to receive. And then our minds, God, we are grateful tonight that once again you have shown favor and grace upon us. God, you have allowed us to experience your word, God, in the format and in the way that you wanted to, it wanted you wanted it to be de to be delivered to your people. And God, tonight I'm grateful. I'm grateful for even having the opportunity to expound on your word. God, my prayer tonight is that somebody receives something. Somebody was made the richer and the better, God, because of the word that was brought forth. Now, God, somebody is praying tonight. They are praying for a breakthrough. They are praying for a deliverance. They are praying for more spiritual education tonight. They are praying for a better walk with you tonight, God. And God, somebody is, is in dire need of healing. 
Somebody wants to be set free on tonight, God. Somebody wants to be used for your benefit. God, somebody is crying out tonight that they've been used by everyone. From family all the way down to the friends. And even some of their foes, they've been used, God. But right now, God, they are wanting to submit and surrender to you. God, as we look over the course of time, as we look back at the course of history, and everything you have done, all the healings, all the miracles, all the blessings, all the people that you set free, all the strength that you've given individuals, God, I begin tonight by place, pl placing names in besides every one of those comments. Healing God, a name is there. Deliverance, a name is there. Somebody that wants to be set free from an addiction tonight, God, we place a name there. God, somebody that's been dealing with alcoholism, we place a name there. Somebody that's been dealing with prostitution, we place a name there. God, somebody, God, that's literally has been going from job to job, and they are literally seeking stability, God. God, we place a name there. God, that man, that woman that's been experiencing financial difficulties, we place a name there. God, tonight we are surrendering, God. We're surrendering our lives and turning every situation over to you, God. God, your hands are mighty. Matter of fact, we sing a song, Mighty Are the Works of Your Hand. And God, we know that you can do mightily with your hands. God, we know for, for a shadow of a doubt that our hands are not bigger than yours. God, we thank you tonight for your hands, the hands of the Creator, the one that made us, God. God, we thank you for shaping us. We thank you for molding us. We even thank you for scolding us, God. We thank you tonight. God, we thank you for trouble. God, we thank you for the disappointments of life. Because all of those things make us stronger. God, God, we surrender to you. And we're not always doing what thus says the Lord. We are very disobedient at times, God. And on tonight, God, I ask now, including myself at the forefront, me being the leader of the church, of your church, of the Ninth Street Missionary Baptist Church, God, is that I become more obedient. God, allow me to hear your word, the words that you want for your people so that they can have a peaceful, a peaceful and then enjoy their lives as long as they are walking in the way that you want us to walk, as long as we're talking, the kind of talk that you want us to talk, God, saturate all of our atmospheres. God, bring fresh, bring forth a renewing. Bring forth a, a, a refreshing God. Bring peace into every home that's represented in this room tonight, God. God, where they yet sit, where they yet stand, God, speak to them and tell them what you are experiencing right now. It's only a test of your faith. And it's only for a season. And God, we're grateful because seasons have to change. God, we thank you for every blessing. We thank you for every mountain. We thank you for every valley that you've placed before us. We thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And all of God's people said together, Amen. God bless you. Historic Ninth Street Missionary Baptist Church. 
Know that God can. God will. And God wants to make changes in all of our lives. Listen, I tell you good night, sweet children. And may the Lord bless you real good. May this night bring you joy. May this night bring you peace. Rest on just a little, a little while longer knowing that God is surrounding you with his angels. Until next Wednesday, the next Live in 45, we'll see you then. But guess what? Sunday is coming, and I got a word for you. Go and study right now. Deuteronomy 1. Deuteronomy 1, verse 9 through 18. Study that for Sunday. Study it for Sunday. Deuteronomy 1, verse 9 through 18. That's the word for Sunday. That's the word for Sunday. The title of Sunday's message is entitled, A Good Leader. A Good Leader. I need you to find your own points in Sunday's message. Read it. Read it. A Good Leader. God bless you. And I pray that this message brought strength and encouragement to you and yours. But y'all know how we end it. We always end Bible study on a, on a great note. So I need everybody to put their hands together once again. And go ahead and just clown if you want to because I am. And that's just the way we do it. So dream it. Good song for you.
Ministry Church fam, these are your monthly church announcements. Every first Monday of the month, Night Street Missionary Baptist Church Prayer Line is hosted at 7.30 a.m. You can dial into the conference line at 605-475-2875, access code 647-4067-POUND. Again, that is 605-475-2875, access code 647-4067, or meet us on Facebook Live. Every Monday is Message Monday, hanging with the Carters at 7 p.m. via the conference line or Facebook Live. Message Monday at 7 p.m. Every Tuesday is Ladies Night. It is the Powder Room with the Women of the Nine virtual Bible study at 7 p.m. Meet us on Facebook Live or by conference line. Tuesdays at 7 p.m. It goes up every Wednesday for Live and 45 with our very own Pastor Carter. Bible study starts at 7 p.m. You can meet us by way of Facebook Live or on the conference line. Again, Live and 45 Bible study every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Who's next? Next Gen's next. Every Monday at 6 p.m. is our children's check-in on Tuesday is Talk About It Tuesday at 7.45 p.m. And then on Saturday, it is Story Time Saturday for our little ones. Meet us on Facebook Live at the Night Street Next Gen Youth Ministry page. You can give your offering and tithe by way of Cash App at dollar sign T-H-A number nine NBC. Again, that's dollar sign the nine NBC on Cash App. You can also give by our Tithely app by locating 9th Street NBC. Again, that's our Tithely app, 9th Street NBC. You can also give by per in person from 1 p.m. to 2 p.m. on Saturdays at the 9th Street Missionary Baptist Church, 1023 North 9th Street, Fort Smith, Arkansas. If you'd like to give to our pastor's love offering, you can do so by cash app at dollar sign C-A-N-D-B-S-P. Again, that's dollar sign C-A-N-D-B-S-P. Ninth Street Missionary Baptist Church. Remember, our mission statement is saving the lost at any cost. 